Good morning, fellow gardeners. Well, we're back with you. We're going to show you a way to make this wicking tub with a uh, cow mineral protein tub and the j milk jugs and the soda pop bottles. This is the most economical way I know of to make it. If you if you get on Craigslist and see if anybody's trying to sell some of these or go to your local feed store, ask them who buys all of these mineral tubs in 100 or 500 lots at a time. They're gonna have lots of tubs that they'll be glad to sell you or give you. Okay, or we have the new ones here that we sell for $12.95 a piece, or if you buy 10 or more, we'll sell them to you for $10 each. Now this is in April of 2001. This won't be a current a year from now. Okay, we sell the used ones for $7 a piece. This is still in April. No, this is in May now, I'm sorry, of, 2000, of 2021. I'll get it right in a minute. I don't even know what my name is for sure, but I think it is. Okay, here we go. We're gonna drill a hole up here at three or four inches up, whichever one you wanna do. Three inches up or four inches up. It doesn't make any difference to me as long as you stay shorter than the gallon jugs in here. This is gonna hold this much water and this much air above it. So this is, here we go. We're gonna show you how to build this one from your jugs and your pop bottles. All right, we got the hole right there. Now we're gonna set her down. And this is the milk jugs. This is happened to be an orange juice jug. We're gonna drill four holes in the bottom. We're gonna drill four holes up here at the top. These are just an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. See them little holes right there? Uh, we don't want them, you know, big as your finger because then the soil will fill them bottles up. Now, we're gonna put these in here solid. Uh, just like that, all the way around and one in the middle, and then we'll pull that one out of the middle and that's gonna be your wick. That soil is gonna wick the water up to your plants. Now we did the same thing on these bottles. These are pop bottles and this is a, a water bottle. It's a good and stout one. I don't advise using regular water bottles because they are so soft. But anyway, we drill the four little holes up here and the four little holes at the bottom, an eighth to three sixteenth. We turn these upside down right in there. That helps stop them holes up. Uh, and if you want to get techno another way, just put you another jug in there and leave all these bottles out. Fill them full of soil all the way around and that'll be your wick there. Just either way you want to do it. Some people want their wick in the middle, some want it around the outside. So we're going to give you that choice of which way you'd like to do. You still cut your pipe at an angle on the end and stick it right down in there. Or you can take one of the jugs and cut the threads off of it and stick it right in that pipe, that pipe right in the jug like that. Either way you want to do. Now, if you really want to get technical, over here where you've got your drain hole, if you want to drill that a little bigger, put you a piece of half inch pipe through that hole over into one of your milk jugs. You can do that so that your drain is always draining out of your water bottle and not out of your soil. That'll keep this from stopping up. A lot of people don't want to go to that trouble, so we're going to give you the choice of which way you want to do. All right, now we're back to this. We're going to put our, here's our hole over here. We're going to put our bottle, our pipe over here. And we're going to ask Richard to help us fill this thing up with soil and halfway up, and then we're going to put our fertilizer in it. Now again, we're using potting mix and not potting soil. Potting soil is a too heavy a soil. Uh, anyway, this potting mix goes in just like into that. Uh, Richard, that's probably enough right there up top of the jugs. We're gonna stop right there. And now then we're gonna put us an eighth. Uh, let's start with our, uh, we put a half a, half a cup of this, uh, Sustain, which is nothing but chicken poop and turkey feather, a half a cup. And we're just going to scatter it down in there. Now this is, if you're making new, I recommend putting it halfway down. If this has been a, used a year and it's full of soil, you can either dip some of the soil out, put your fertilizer in, put you some new soil in, put that used soil back down in the bottom of the next thing you build, or you can put it back in here if you prefer. All right, it takes a half a cup of that. It takes a fourth a cup of the uh, of the sea mineral. Let me get a fourth of a cup of that in there. Let me get it right here. Now this is not sea salt. This is sea mineral. 
uh, don't do the problem of the, of the thing of putting in sea salt. That'll burn your plants. Uh, I know we had some people try to use that Redmond's and you can't use it like this because it'll burn your plants too easy. Uh, it's good for pastures, but it's not good for uh, potted plants like this. Okay, we're putting an eighth of an ounce, I mean eighth of a cup of Epsom salt, which is the Epsom salt you have under your sink. We're going to put an eighth of a cup. And by the way, you can call our number and we will send you a copy of this uh, paper of what all you put in this bucket so you can, if that's the way you want it, call 1-580-564-2166. Yeah, don't call my number, call Joyce's. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can call me at 580-564-5909 and I'll do the same thing. I'll, I will text you a copy of that paper that we use. Okay, this is an eighth a cup of gypsum. We encourage you to use this. A lot of people call and say, well, I can't find gypsum. I can't find lime. Uh, we got the Epsom salt. We got the lime. We got the gypsum in there, didn't we? Now then, we got that in there. We're ready to go, I guess. Okay, that's all five items in there. Now then, Richard, go ahead and finish this up. Uh, so let me call. Do I have to put this pipe in? You don't have to put that pipe in, but the reason I put that pipe in there is so that the, the, the people that wants to put water in it every day, they won't drown their plant. They can put it down in the bottom and let it suck up like it wants to. A little bit more, Richard, will be fine, okay? All right, that ought to be good, Richard, right there. We thank you very much. And now then, we're going to spread this out. You can fill it up a little fuller if you want to. It's going to settle a little bit, but we're going to stop right there. You put your hole in the middle. If you want to put one tomato plant, that's what we recommend because this thing's going to grow big and a big root system and everything with all this fertilizer. Put your plant right in there, tomato plant, and then for the next two to three weeks, water it from the top just every other day or every three days as it needs water to get that plant to rooting down into there. After the two or three weeks, quit putting water on top of it. I know if you're out inside, outside in the rain, it's going to rain in. That's okay. Just have to use your head and say, well, it rained last night. I won't need to water for the next two or three days. Now, the only thing that rain's going to do is going to weaken your fertilizer. So what you need to do is come back next time you water, put your master blend, uh, your uh, nature source in there, one teaspoon per gallon. Again, this is the 1043. We use the higher nitrogen to start the plant to growing. Now, when this tomato plant or any other plant that fruits starts to bloom, excuse me, like uh, peppers, eggplants, cucumbers, green beans, squash, tomatoes. When it gets up to the point that you start seeing some blooms, you start using this master, this uh, nature source, put it up in the garage and get you the master blend out because now you're going to start using one teaspoon per every gallon of water you put in this water capacity down here. If it takes one gallon or two gallon or three gallon, you put a teaspoon per every gallon of water you put in there till it runs out that hole. We want to fill it up and then you're good for about a week. Now if the plant is up here getting up into summertime and it's real hot, six or seven feet tall, then you're going to have to water about every four to five days. But as uh, long as it's small, once a week will get you by. Anyway, you use this master blend on all blooming plants after they start blooming. Now, if you're growing something like lettuce or spinach, something that you eat the leaves of, you know, uh, uh, kale, anything that you eat the leaves of, you stay with your nature source because you're growing leaves and not growing blooms. So that's the way you do this. And uh, what have I missed now, Jack? Have I missed anything? I've got the tomato plant in here. We're f watering it the first two to three weeks with, from the top with fertilizer or without fertilizer if you don't want to mix it in. You do have a little bit of fertilizer down there to get you started. That's the reason we do that in there so you won't. But just don't get to where you skip fertilizing because we want this plant eating and drinking and breathing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want, you to, I want this plant eating every day that you eat. 
And that's the reason we put this food down in the bottom so it can constant feed. What about plastic covering over the top? Yeah, if you're out in the rain, if you're worried about out in the rain, you know, you're getting like, they got it paused rather, they got six or seven inches of rain the other night. If you're worried about that, you know, that's going to be a lot of rain go into this. That's going to go out that hole. You're going to lose that fertilizer out, which you can live with. But if you want to keep that rain out, you go ahead and round this bucket up with the soil. Make it round. Put your tomato plant in there. You take one of these, take a black plastic bag or a white plastic bag, and you're going to put it down over it. You're going to cut you a little bit of X in it. Put it down over your tomato plant. And you've got it's 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 going to be mounted up so and you put this plastic bag over here and tie your string around under this lip and that keeps that rain from going in. There'll be a little bit of rain going around that plant if you got a little teeny X in it, but it won't be much. And that'll keep that excess rain out. I don't usually do that. I just let it go and put some more fertilizer in it. If we get a five or six inch rain, I know I need to come back and put about two or three teaspoons in a gallon of water and pour it down through there to get it back up, built back up like it is. Anyway, if you like this video, punch the button, ring the bell, subscribe, and we'll come back and make you another video.